always loved building, I always loved making things. And for me, that's all I ever wanted to do. There's nothing else that I ever wanted to be, even if I didn't quite know what an architect was at the time. There is that sort of bravery. We don't quite know our limits, and I don't think Asia knows its limits at all. We've got a free spirit that allows us to merge ideas from very many sectors, bring it all together, look at the cultures deeply and intimately because we relate to them on, on a very personal level and then cause change through that collaboration. We're used to working with tight time frames and tight budgets. We work quickly and come up with innovative responses that I think translate very well to, to foreign markets. I think Australians stick with projects whereas people from other places often um, do the design and leave. And the Australians are congratulated, if you will, um, for sticking with the project through thick and thin. I think we're very good at, at, at tying, you know, building architecture landscape. We probably have a cultural informality that's probably quite relaxed and quite refreshing. There's certainly a lot of responsibility <laughs> in delivering architecture. Less authority, more yeah. responsibility, more liability. That's yeah. the joys of practice right. at the moment. Great. Email is killing architecture. You really have to be more creative. The more constraints that there are on a project, the more you have to sort of dig deep and find ways to, to achieve creative outcomes. We don't try and make solutions, we just create lots of problems. And then we have to solve them. And we have to sort of find our way out of it. Mm. And then finding a way out of it, that's where you, you know, invent something that... Uh, everything's been seen before, but you invent something that maybe has been forgotten, to put it that way. And it usually happens when someone says, you can't possibly do that. And that's usually the time when you've actually had a good idea. I just love that moment when you move from understanding the program perfectly to that sort of poetic level when you're being totally imaginary about the project. We're using the highest technology. We're using carbon fibre and spectra and dyneema. Now we're trying to bring that sort of sensibilities to our architecture. If you need more stress here, you only put more stress in exactly the area you need. I think it's both an art form and it's also highly technical and, and that's probably something that you know puts you in a state of constant learning which I think is a pretty exciting place to be professionally. A lot of the best architecture in Australia now is again about being all it needs to be. So discarding the superfluous, keeping it very simple, very straightforward and very relaxed. I was always intended to be an architect. My father was a builder in New Zealand. In all of my school holidays I worked as a labourer on his building sites. But we like to build and we like the ideas about how we build to actually be generated by the project itself, by the people engaged in the project and the place in which it's located. The influences come from all sorts of places and if you look at the individual architects working in Australia, they're all different. So everybody here is virtually an immigrant. If they're not an immigrant, they're a son of a daughter or a granddaughter of an immigrant. How many people from different countries have worked through my office? Definitely over a dozen. And I think that acceptance of different cultures is something that Australian architects bring. Other cultures just go in and dictate what the term should be to that location. We interpret what goes on in their framework, bring in what our knowledge and then make special magic in terms of the product that we deliver to them.